Knowing how to position elements with CSS is very important for building websites with a great layout. So in this lesson, we will learn step by step everything about how to position elements using CSS. So let's get started. In CSS, the position property is used to tell an element how it should be positioned. The position property can have different values. The default value is static. With position static, Elements are positioned according to the normal flow of the document. Have a look at this HTML page for example. We have three different div containers and because div containers are block elements, they are positioned below each other, taking up the whole width. And have a look at this HTML page. Here we have one div container and two span containers. The div container taking up the whole width, whereas the span containers take up only the space they need, because they are inline containers. We can change whether an element is inline or block by using the display CSS property. Let's make the div container inline. So we set the display property to the value of inline. And as you can see in the browser, now we have three different inline containers. Next, let's set the span containers to block and have a look at the result in the browser. Let's have a look at another way of positioning elements with CSS. With relative position, we can position elements relative to their original position. Let's have a look at the code to understand how it works. This HTML page has three different boxes and we want to use relative positioning to position box one now. So first we set the position property to relative. Next we set the left property to 100 pixels. Don't be confused. By setting the left property, we move the element to the right and not to the left. It's like the distance the left side of the box should move. In this case, it's a positive value, 100 pixels. If we would set a negative value, the box would move to the left. Next, we want to move the box down by 150 pixels. So we set the top property to 150 pixels. Notice how box 2 and box 3 don't take up the original space of box 1, because relatively positioned elements aren't removed from the document flow. Next we are going to learn about absolute positions. They behave differently than relatively positioned elements, because first they are removed from the normal document flow, so other elements take up the original position of an absolutely positioned element. And second, they aren't positioned relative to their original position, but instead relative to the nearest positioned ancestor. Let's have a look at some code. The first thing we need to do to demonstrate absolute positioning is creating an ancestor for box2. So let's create a div container around box2 and give it the id parent2. Now back to the CSS, we first want to set the height of parent2 to 200 pixels and the width to auto. And then we set the position property of box2 to absolute and the top offset to 100 pixels. Have a look at the browser. Parent2, the ancestor of box2 is not positioned. That's why box2 is positioned relative to the browser window. Let's change the top offset to 0 pixels and add a left offset of 50 pixels to box2 and have a look at the browser again. Box2 is positioned at the top of the page. Now watch carefully because we will set parent2 to position relative. Now because parent2 is the nearest positioned ancestor of box2, the top offset of box2 is now relative to the position of parent2. Let's change the top offset to 100 pixels to demonstrate it even better. Now we can see very clearly that the top offset of 100 pixels is relative to the position of parent2. Next up, we will have a look at the fixed position. HTML elements with fixed position are always displayed at the same location of the screen, regardless of how much the user has scrolled the page. In other words, they are relative to the viewport. Let's jump into the code and set the position property of box 3 to fixed. Let's set the top offset to 50% because we want to display box 3 in the middle of the screen. And as you can see, it doesn't matter how much we scroll the page, box 3 always remains in the same spot. Sticky position is similar to fixed position with a small but interesting difference. 
When we scroll past an element with position sticky, it will behave similar to a fixed position and remain at the location defined by the top left, right and bottom offsets. So let's set the position property of box 3 to sticky and define a top offset of 0 pixels. Now let's scroll the page and as soon as we reach box 3, it will stick to the top of the page and remain there until we scroll up again and reach its original position. The last thing we are going to learn in this lesson is how to control the floating behavior of HTML elements. Here we have an HTML page which contains an image and some text and we want to let the text float around the image. We can achieve that by using the float property. Let's set the float property to left and as you can see the image is positioned to the left and the text to the right. And if we change the float property to right, the image will be positioned to the right. Okay, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. To support my work, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any content about learning to code. So happy learning and see you next time.